Hey, it's Andrew from Fly. So this is the continuation of the video from before where we showed you how to do JavaScript, HTML, CSS all locally on your computer. And this next one's going to pick up where we left off and we're going to use Ruby on Rails to kind of show you how you make dynamic HTML. So here we go. All right, so the first step is to go to the Rails site and you can find it easily. I just typed in Rails on Google. It's the first one, Ruby on Rails. And so I can't quite show you exactly how to set it up in your system, but it's pretty simple if you follow their instructions. I'm on a Mac and you're probably on Windows, I'm guessing. So here are the instructions right here. You just have to download the Windows installer. And then you've got to get something called uh, Ruby Gems. And all you have to do is download it and type Ruby setup.rb. And when that's done, you type gem install rails dash dash include dependencies. And it'll install all of Ruby on Rails for you. And then we're going to talk about this one in more detail here. You're going to create a new application, and then you're going to open your browser to that magic address. And you can also use 127.0.0.1, which you'll see me use pretty soon here. And this is the important distinction between the last video, where we just opened up a local file on your hard drive. So here we go. I'm going to type uh, Rails, and then just any word I want. I'm going to type demo, because it's the demo project. And it's going to create a bunch of stuff for me. And I'm going to change into that directory called demo, and I'm going to look at the files in there. And a lot of stuff is already done for you with Ruby and Rails. It's kind of the nice thing. So all we have to do to kind of get going and show you some stuff is make a few uh, extra modifications. And here I am typing Ruby script generate. And Ruby has a lot of stuff it generates for you. And here I made a mistake. I typed in hello. I forgot to specify the type of thing I wanted it to create for me, which is controller. Everything's based in Ruby on Rails off these controllers. So I want a controller named hello. And there it went ahead and generated me my controller. When you go to your site, uh, you know, with nothing after it, you know, your, your, your site.com slash nothing, it'll run the default controller, which you have to set up. But if you don't, if you put something after the slash, if you go to your site slash hello, in our example, that's going to be the hello controller. And this is, on Ruby, this is how Ruby on Rails does its nice URLs. So here I am about to edit uh, a file called index.rhtml. And it has to be called .rhtml for Ruby to understand it because we're going to put specific Ruby stuff inside this HTML file because this file is not actually an HTML file. Uh, what we're doing right now is setting up you know, some very basic HTML like we did in the previous video. And we're actually, this first step, not going to put anything special in it at all. We're just going to write the word test and make sure that shows up. But uh, So this file went in the folder called uh, views. So for every controller, there's also a corresponding view, which shows how that controller should render certain things. And, here we are typing HTML body test and HTML. We're just going to save that file. And so there it is. It's in app views hello index.rhtml. And now we're going to go back and open up that controller under apps controller hello underscore controller.rb. And you see that Ruby already generated this part for us, but we have to do one extra thing. We have to say def index, and then that's it. And all we're doing is defining the default, uh, default action inside that controller. And in Ruby, index is the default one. So now that we got that, watch what we can do. Now we can type Ruby script server, like they say in that example we saw on the website. And there it is. It's starting up a web server for us. And we're going to go back to our browser, and we're going to type in the magical address. There it is. And we get the Ruby example thing. Now this is a web server running locally in our machine, but it is not a file. And there we are typing in slash hello, and we get back test. You notice you can also do slash index, because in Ruby, if you, do, if you leave off that last part, it assumes you mean index. So there we are. We have a hello. It served up that page. I'm going to hit Control C here to stop the server. And now let's go add something more special. Let's go add something truly dynamic. So, so um, in underneath the uh, index definition, I'm just going to create a variable here with the at symbol at it. And I'm going to assign it to an empty array, which is just those brackets open and end. And the at symbol is very important in Ruby. And I'm going to make another little variable called i, set it equal to 0. I'm going to say while i is less than 100, so this is a loop. I'm going to start looping through here. I'm going to say that temp variable, it's an array, so there's 100 copies of them. And I'm saying, you know, the ith one of them, which means the 0, 1, and the 1, 1, and the 2, 1, and the 3, 1, all the way up to 99. And I'm going to set it equal to go to muzak.com. And then I'm going to set i equal to i plus 1, and then end the loop. And so if you study that carefully, you'll see all it's doing is looping through there 100 times and setting up those variables. So what can we do with a nice uh, array that has 100 items in it? Well, we can go back to our view here. 
oops, I went to the wrong one here. So we want, rather than control words, we want to go to views, and it's hello, index.rhtml. And let's get rid of that boring static HTML because now that we have Ruby on Rails, we can do something dynamic. We can actually put something. So those little um, brackets there, which is the less than simple percent, is Ruby's way of saying, hey, this is, is an HTML. This is something special. This is Ruby code. And so to loop through that array I set up before, I'm going to say for i in at temp. And that i can be anything you want. It's just a, just a placeholder for you. And then I'm going to end that little you know, percent uh, greater than symbol. So I'm saying go back to HTML. And this part gets a little confusing because now that I'm inside HTML, I'm going to open those brackets again in a second, you'll see here. But first, I'm going to put a paragraph tag so that each one of our things is its own paragraph. And now I'm going to do that same type thing, except there's an equal sign after it, which means display this value. It doesn't mean the other one means executes in Ruby code. But with the equal sign, it means go ahead and display that value out there. So I'm displaying whatever i is, which is just you know those variables we set up before, ending the loop. And now, if I go back and I run the server again, I'll go back to our little web browser, hit refresh. Look at that. We have 100 go to muzak.com. Now, the important point there is it would take you a while to you know, type all those in or copy and paste them over and over again to a static file. The whole point is this is dynamic. This means that you can generate stuff on the fly. And here I can prove that, you know, that other address works the same way. But the important thing to understand is that it's not a local file anymore. That you cannot do this just from a browser. You need a language like Ruby. And Java can do this, and Perl can do this, and all the other languages can do this. I mean, this is what we talked about in the other video, that the whole point of having these languages is a means to an end to simply dynamically generate these HTML. And we didn't do any CSS or JavaScript in this example, but it's the same thing. It'll just dynamically generate that stuff. And from here, you can get really fancy because you can, rather than just generate that, that little thing that said go to Muzak over and over again, you can go hit a database, grab some information, and generate that. And that's how all those dynamic sites in the web work. So now you know. This is Andrew from Fly.